In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I am the true vine, says Jesus in our gospel reading this morning. This statement is part of what is known as the farewell discourse. The word spoken to 11 of his remaining disciples on the eve before Jesus' crucifixion. His time is almost up and he desperately wants the remaining faithful followers to understand that they must stay very connected to the vine, Jesus' teachings, in order to continue to spread the good news to as many as possible. Last week, we heard another I am statement. Do you remember that? I am the good shepherd, he said. There are in fact seven I am statements in the Gospel of John, as Jesus seeks to reveal his true identity to his listeners. And where else did we hear an I am statement in the Bible? Back in the Old Testament, when God revealed himself to Moses, I am Lord, your God. Jesus adopts this I am phrase and repeats it seven times in the Gospel of John in seven different ways. I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the door of the sheep. I am the resurrection of the life. I am the good shepherd. I am the truth, the way and the life. And finally, I am the true vine. Just as the people of the first century understood what it meant to be a shepherd, the metaphor of a vine was very easy to fathom. Vineyards were very common sites. They were everywhere. People understood that in order to grow de decent grapes, they must be attached to strong vines. Branches that are sustained and nourished by the vine will bear the best fruit. The branches that aren't well cared for will die, either on their own or by the gardener who prunes them so that the healthy ones can have more sunlight, more room, more of a chance to grow and flourish. These people in the late first century, when this last gospel was written, desperately needed to hear these words from the author of John. As a small Christian community, it now has been years since Jesus has died and it didn't seem like he was coming back anytime soon. They were waiting for him and they were trying to hold on to their faith at a time when it wasn't easy to be followers of this newfound way of doing things. They were being ridiculed and punished for their beliefs. They needed something to cling to, to sustain them, to fortify themselves against the opposition that they were facing. The Gospel of John provided this sustenance for them, especially in this I am statement. In other words, Jesus tells them very clearly through John that it is he is the sustenance that they must hold on to. It's only through their continuing to believe in him that they will be given all that they need to keep on with their mission of being his followers. Abide in me as I abide in you. But here's the catch. In order for this to work, the branches have to make a choice to commit themselves to the vine. They've already received the invitation. Now it's up to them to choose to receive all the good that is being offered to them so that they can grow into the strongest and most sturdy branches with the most succulent fruit that is possible. They have the choice to turn their backs on the vine and go it alone, but there will be no nutrients to keep them alive and well. Jesus is the vine. We are the branches that bear the fruit. And who tends the vineyard? Why, God, of course, for God is the creator. God has planted Jesus the vine on earth to model a way of living that can bear much spiritual fruit. The spiritual fruit, as described in Galatians, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, 
faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. This fruit is contrasted with the more human tendencies, lust, greed, gluttony, self-centeredness. We know what they are. Followers of Jesus in John's time and Christians today need to be reminded of this mutual relationship with Jesus. Jesus uses the word abide eight times in this gospel passage this morning, and I didn't even bother to count how many times it was used in the epistle of John. He does this to emphasize how important it is to know that we need to abide in Jesus just as Jesus abides in us. We can't just have a superficial or intellectual knowledge of Jesus. We must take him in. We must abide in him, open ourselves up to his words and his actions, take them into our heart. He's already given us the gift of abiding in us. You have already been cleansed by the word I have spoken to you, he says. Now it is up to us to pay attention to that and to live our lives with a sense of security and peace, knowing that we've already been given everything we need. Abiding in Jesus and recognizing that he abides in us is important not only for ourselves, but especially for our lives and community. In a vineyard, as we know, grapes don't grow individually. They grow in clusters. We don't only need the vine. We need each other to grow healthy and strong. The author of John was speaking to a community of believers who needed each other to stay on course, to hold each other up, to keep affirming their faith that the way they have chosen to live, that is by following Christ, will continue. We're not so different than that community in the first century. We need each other today still. Like a clump of grapes, we don't grow and mature in isolation as a community. Time and time again, Jesus shows us through his words and our actions that true spiritual growth occurs in relationship. In relationship with God, with Jesus, and with each other. Those spiritual gifts that I mentioned before of love and peace and joy, etc., they would mean nothing if we kept them to ourselves. We, the branches, can't continue to grow and thrive as the body of Christ unless we truly believe in the teachings of Christ. We, a community of believers, must remember that Jesus is the source that we need to move ahead and face our challenges to answer our questions. Who are we as a community of Christ? What do we stand for? Who will we call as our next rector to be our spiritual leader? We must remember this, especially now in this interim pro process, to stay close and cling to Jesus as grapes cling to the vine, because only in that way will we bear much fruit. We will act with love and mercy and tolerance of each other's differences. We will be clear-headed about how to reflect God's love in the world outside our doors. For Jesus said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My father is glorified this, by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. May we, the community of Emmanuel Church, abide in Jesus just as he already abides in us. And may the fruits we produce glorify God. Amen. <laughs>